I'm Michelle Von Roeder and my husband and I own a local irrigation company called ES Landscaping and we are going to talk a little bit about lawn care um, on behalf of the Peterborough Chamber of Commerce. So, um, a little bit about me. I used to work on golf courses all through university um, when I thought I was going to be a teacher and then I decided to keep my summer job because I liked all of this so much. So I ended up going to uh, Penn State for a turf grass diploma and I did a, a Guelph program as well. So I'm well versed in the ways of the lawn. So um, this is the perfect time of year to start talking about this kind of stuff. If you haven't already, um, this is a great time to get your lawn aerated or dethatched. It uh, doesn't matter which one. Some people prefer the dethatching for the fall over the spring. I've done both and always been happy with the results, but the important thing is that you need to do something because your lawn can develop a lot of thatch. And these days we have issues where the biopesticides that we're allowed to use, um, they, aren't, they aren't as effective in the same way that the old pesticides were. So it's even more important now that we think about all of the cultural practices and different things that we can do to help our lawn because really the weeds and the bugs, the grubs and chinch bug was a terrible thing last year for lots of people. Um, but all of these things, we want to try and control them a little bit by giving them less warm, fuzzy places to live, like the thatch in your turf, for example. So what is thatch? So thatch is really just a buildup of uh, dead grass and roots and different debris. So over time, if we don't do things like aerate or dethatch, we're creating this, this layer here. And what we really need is we need our roots and our air and our water to be able to penetrate that to have a nice healthy lawn. So if you aerate, of course, you see cores come out of the lawn. Um, most of the time on a home lawn, you would just leave those in and, you know, let them get kind of beat up over time and come back into part of the soil. Um, dethatching is almost like picture ninja stars kind of slicing into the grass and pulling out those dead layers and then afterwards it's kind of one of those situations where it gets worse before it gets better your lawn looks really messy but then you rake it all up and put it in your brown bags and get rid of it and almost instantly you can see the grass just almost come back to life a bit you can hear it just whisper to you thank you I can breathe so after we do these things for our lawn which are so critically important um, because like I was mentioning, we don't have the same control over our environment as we used to before the biopesticide ban. Now, of course, a natural lawn is a better way to go. If you think about weeds and bugs and stuff, they're sort of like the bully in the playground. And if you don't have a strong lawn to stand up to these things, then they're just going to win every time. So instead of focusing on having weed man out or having somebody out and spraying your weeds and doing all these things, we really want to shift that focus and think about what we can do to help our lawn grow. Um, I often say to clients, now I'm not in the business of growing grass for people really at this stage, um, but I am in the business of putting sprinklers in. So I have clients ask me all the time about their lawn and of course this is something that I, I enjoy. Um, so I end up talking a lot about it. Um, but I have clients say to me things about, oh, well, you know, I'm going to have it sprayed for weeds. So I always follow that up with, okay, now are you going to aerate? Are you going to overseed? Are you going to top dress? What's your fertilizing schedule? Because in my mind, if you're not going to do all those other things, then you can just have a bonfire with your money if you feel like just giving it away. Um, because really... That's only a small, small piece of the puzzle. The way the new biopesticides work for your weeds, um, really it just kills the top growth. So you'll see them all kind of turn black with this new Fiesta, not so new anymore, but with Fiesta, it turns the top growth black. But the roots underneath the ground are still alive. So what you're really doing is you're beating the weeds back a little bit to give your grass a bit of a head start. So that's when we want to kick it into high gear. So we're going to have our lawn aerated. You can rent a machine or you can hire a company to come in and aerate it or dethatch it, whichever you choose. After that, I always, always recommend that you at least put seed down. 
because we've opened up all these holes and we've made our lawn, you know, happy and it's breathing and taking things in. But if we're not going to give it grass seed, well, the weeds are going to come because weeds seed from overhead. Do you see how the dandelions turn into the white seed heads and they blow all over the place? So you want to, at the very least, be putting seed down. Um, I really think the best thing to do, especially, you know, in Peterborough, um, Lindsay, all these areas, we have so many new homes that have been built and a lot of the soil is really just, it's, it's not your top pick soil. You just kind of get what you get. So what we want to do is sort of work on amending the soil and having, um, a little bit of a better base for our lawns. Of course, our lawns and our roots will do a lot better in something that's not so hard and rock. We get a lot of clay almost in a lot of our soils here when we have our new subdivisions. Um, so I always, always recommend, and not all places are the same, whether you call one supplier or another, they may call it top dressing mix or double mix. But I, I very rarely suggest getting just straight up topsoil. There is one supplier in our area who has amazing topsoil. Um, but generally you're looking for a double mix or a top dressing mix. And that's going to look like this, like nice and black and see how it's not so clumpy. A lot of topsoil you get is going to be just hard to work with. Forget about the nutrient value in the soil. Um, it's just hard and clumpy and not fun to work with. So for us, you know, if we're at home with ourselves, we get a, a yard of soil. It's already labor intensive. Your lawn is very much a labor of love, but um, you know, the least we can do is make it a little bit easier on ourselves. So get the soft, fluffy, nutrient-rich top dressing or double mix. Um, so I love to get that and I get about a yard or two, depending on my weekend or what, you know. Um, if you have access to teenagers with strong young backs, by all means use them. That is what summer is for. Get those kids out there working and teach them what to do with these lawns. These are good skills. So, um, I very professionally like to measure my seed with, well, in this case it's a child's pepper pig cup. Sometimes I use a Tim Hortons cup or what, what have you. Um, so I get a couple cups of this and I put it just right in. But now what is this seed that I'm using? So the seed that I have here today um, is a couple different types of seed. And you always want, um, I don't often recommend just getting one straight type of seed. They all have different jobs. And really there's so much science and so much that goes into these seeds these days. People are breeding seeds to do things that make them, you know, less desirable for bugs to eat, for example. Um, but what I'm really going to focus on here is uh, rye grass, which is considered a nurse grass. So um, I've got a couple different types of seed in my hand. But, so rye grass is very important when you have a mix of seed. The reason being, they call it a nurse grass because um, it, it germinates in about seven days. So from the time you kind of mix that in and get it into your soil and spread it onto the, your lawn um, in good growing conditions, which they say sort of the perfect, perfect optimal growth time is when you're medium um, when your average temperature for the day is about 16 degrees when you combine your high and your low, right? So that's when you have your very happy grass growing weather. So we got really, really hot a couple, well, last week or the week before, and we're kind of cooler now. And right now things are loving it. Um, grass, flowers, weeds, everything is just happy right now because it's a little bit cooler. Um, a little bit more rain would be helpful, but beggars can't be choosers so um you want the rye grass because it's gonna it's gonna start to come up and fill in those spaces and start to take over some some territory that weeds won't get into um, blue grass is what you typically find when you get say a roll of sod um, and blue grass is great it looks nice it feels good but it does have a couple things about it that aren't so desirable. For example, it takes about 21 days for most bluegrass seeds to actually start to grow. That's why your ryegrass is so important. Um, if you had nothing happening for almost a month, 
then by the time your grass has started to grow, you're already full of weeds, right? So you want to make sure that, of course, we love the bluegrass and that looks wonderful, but we really want the rye in there <clears throat> to make sure that we have something happening. Um, a lot of mixes these days have a fescue, a fine fescue. Um, the reason for this is that they're, they're more drought tolerant. And now fescues have come a long way. They used to be very kind of hard. Um, but the fine fescues, you would, I think, unless you were really, really paying attention, would have a hard time telling the difference in the type of grass. But really, what it's good for is for drought, which, let's be honest, we had a really hot year last year. It looks like it's going to be hot again. This drought tolerance, water conservation, none of this stuff is really going to go away for us. We need to be thinking um, about how do we pick species that are going to adapt to this and live in this. Um, also, when we start to talk about water, um, you want to be looking for some deep, infrequent... Mix in some seed, just like that. Um, and basically, I just take my shovel and I just start to mix it all up. You really want to make sure you're getting in and getting the bottom and getting it all really mixed. I'll show you what a good, a good looking wheelbarrow is. But maybe I'll bring you a little shovel full. But you kind of want to see if you're looking in your wheelbarrow, you kind of want to see how that is all, this is all seed in there, right? So you can put the seed on top, but if you just mix it in, then you're creating a great little um, seed bed, really, right? Um, and that just helps to keep it all in. I also really uh, encourage you, if you want to just have somebody come and lay the soil, that's great too. And you can spread some seed, just put it in a fertilizer spreader and walk around. If you have a roller, that's great because you really want the soil to seed contact. However you achieve that, whether it's this or whether it's a different way, even if you just uh, turn a sprinkler on and help just sit that seed down. Soil to seed contact is key. Um, Nitrogen is your key nutrient for plant growth. Phosphorus is good for seed establishment. And what else do we have? KO potassium. And that is important because that helps um, with uh, stress tolerance. So stress for grass, not the same as stress for us. Um, but you know, I'm sure you've noticed when you go into your backyard or anywhere that is walked on a lot that it, it tends to wear out faster, right? So these are high traffic areas. It gets walked on a lot. It gets compacted a lot. So the soils get, you know, um, when the soils get compacted also, um, on the, on the grass closer to the ground is called the crown and those can, if they get crunched, um, then that kills the grass. So that's why when you see, you know, a golf course saying frost warning, um, <coughs> excuse me, when there's frost, it's making that crown even more vulnerable. So if you step on it, you crunch the crown and you kill the grass. So I don't know if you've ever seen on a golf course where somebody's walked off a cart path or um, driven a cart and you can see the tire marks. It just looks like it's burnt almost, right? Um, but that's what it is. So we, the K helps, helps give your grass a little bit of a strength to deal with some of these um, different stresses. Stress can also be heat. Um, you know, you really, I really try to talk about grass and seed and stuff in terms of almost, uh, in people terms almost, you know, because it is a living, breathing thing. So if you're getting walked on all the time or not getting enough to eat, not getting enough to drink, all of these things, um, it's gonna it's gonna impact you and it's gonna stunt your growth and you're definitely not gonna be thriving right um, something I do like to use if I don't have um, well not if I don't have, but I do like to use this even in the spring because I always kind of hold off on my um, spring fertilizing sometimes I don't do it right as I'm overseeding because I kind of p figure that when we're in our really great growing weather, Mother Nature is doing her thing. I'm just going to put the seed down. I'm going to let it go. And then I'm going to give my seed a little kick 
like maybe a week or two later and then I'll put my fertilizer down and let fertilizer kind of kick in. What I do like to use is a granulated compost. So, you know, it's not stinky like if you were to get a bunch of, you know, manure or something. And this is essentially just worm castings. Um, so I would mix it right in as well. It's hard to see, but basically there's no smell. So maybe a little bit dusty. Um, but I mix that right in and really this is, this is not going to do any harm. No, it's going to do nothing but good. And a bag is very inexpensive, really. It's about 30, 35 bucks or something for, you know, a 25 pound bag of granular compost. Um, like I said, which is basically worm castings and you cannot put too much down. Um, I always put it down when I'm seeding. I really don't seed without it. Um, because it's just a little bit of good nutrient and it's just something that's going to help to f to feed your lawn a little bit more. And then, you know, it gets back into some of this soil amendment type of thing. Um, so really, I love the worm castings. I use it all the time. I generally just make a little wheelbarrow cocktail. And um, once I'm happy with that, I take that and I spread it all over my lawn. Now, as I was saying, your lawn is a labor of love. So you can't do anything to your lawn and expect to have perfect results right away. If you want instant gratification, you're going to have to go and buy a skid of sod. Um, but of course, the cost is, is very different, right? Um, and you know, anything worth having is worth working for, I think. So we take it, we mix it all, and I don't think I have enough compost in here. So I'm going to put more, and again, very professional, with my Peppa Pig. Um, so this is probably about the size of like a, a medium Tim Hortons cup. So I would put about two and a half cups of seed in, maybe three. You just want it to look really mixed in. And you want to look like you've got enough seed in there. And basically, the compost is hard to see. It's just like a little bit lighter brown. But this is basically what we're looking for in a wheelbarrow. Oh, not that. That was too much seed in that one spot. But that's basically what we're looking for. Now, why don't we just why don't we just dump this all over the lawn? So now Where's a good spot here? We'll put some right here. I could do this anywhere. We just moved in July and I am fighting the good fight with you. This lawn, I have spent so many hours picking dandelions. So even if you don't want to have a lawn care company out to spray your weeds, I decided not to. Um, I have two young boys and I have time on the weekend and I like this kind of thing. So we have literally just been picking the dandelions. Um, and I've probably, <laughs> the brown bags, like five brown bags of dandelions. So I am in the trenches <laughs> with you trying to get my lawn back. So I'll just pick any old spot here that works for the shot because really I could be doing this all over. So, I'm really just going to dump the soil and seed here, and I'm just going to rake it in. And I would do this all over wherever, right? If this was my front lawn, I would just rake it everywhere. And it's great. You just put it right on top of the grass. I'll bring the camera over and show you after so you can see that really we're just... The good, the good grass that's here is going to keep standing up um, through the soil. And this is also, aside from growing in lovely grass, this is also going to fill any little like depressions and stuff that you might have in your lawn. Um, 
so that, you know, one day your lawn will be nice and even. And it'll look like a manicured golf course with really just some sweat equity. Now, I do always say that in the spring and fall, I like to be aggressive like this once. Because this is a lot of work. You know, that's just one wheelbarrow and you can see it's covered some space. But if I was doing even just a home in a, in a subdivision, I would be looking at um, quite a few wheelbarrows probably. 10 to 15 or so. So let's just show here. You can see how it's all nicely spread out. And that is going to get us some really great grass growing here for lawns. Um, so it is a little bit more uh, work, a little bit more elbow grease, but you can still maintain and even start from scratch. I have many clients this year um, where, like I said, I'm not doing the lawn care for them, but I am, I am recommending the products and I am walking them through timing and helping them kind of get things organized. And they have, you know, I've got three people who live next door to each other who had resotted their lawns two times and have lost everything again. Now last year they had a chinch bug problem plus the high heat. And so they just don't want to spend the money on sod again. So we're just going to baby step through it. And you know, this year they'll have, they'll have some lawn. Uh, they started their seed probably two weeks ago. I'm starting to see it come up. But of course, as seed comes, it's not going to be full and thick right away. Like I keep just preaching over and over again. It's a labor of love. But by this time next year, they're going to have a really good looking lawn. It still probably will need some thickening up. But if we just keep working at it like this and we develop a nice strong lawn and we keep doing the cultural things, then we can really stay on top of it and we can really build um, a lawn that becomes, you know, not so much high maintenance. It's, it's really just about staying on top of it. So, of course, we don't all have this kind of time. We have kids, we have work, you know, the people I'm talking about that I'm working with they're retired and they're at home, so they have the time to put in this sweat equity. There are lots of people you can hire who can do these kinds of things for you. Um, it just really depends on what you're trying to get out of your lawn. Um, oh, I guess I need to go back. We didn't really talk. We talked about the types of fertilizer. Um, so quick, quick refresh. N, P, and K, right? So nitrogen is going to give you like your overall plant health. Um, phosphorus, the second number, is more about um, seed establishment. And then the potassium is about stress tolerance. So like I said, I generally recommend something with a high first number. So a 30, uh, a 30, and a 5, and a 10, or a 15. That, that seems to be pretty good. Um, and again, I really, really stress, just go for the slow release. Most of us at home are just, uh, we're not into the whole science of it so much. And we don't, we don't really want to be out there trying to fertilize every month because every time that you take that fertilizer onto the lawn, you are risking a spill or doing something. And if anybody has ever dropped a fertilizer spreader over or tried to fill up a bag on top of their own lawn, um, and missed, then you know what fertilizer burn looks like <laughs> and um, it happens quick and it takes quite a while for it to to grow out sometimes you got to just cut that sod out and even dig out that soil um, but with a slow release you just set it and let it do its thing for a couple you know 10 to 12 weeks um, now that being said nitrogen is is the nutrient that will burn. That is the, the number that's in there that is gonna burn your lawn. When we're putting fertilizer down, we're looking to do about one pound of nitrogen per thousand, sometimes one and a half, kind of depending on what your, your goal is. Um, 
And so just for easy, easy math, say you have like a, a 25, 4, 10. Um, so basically, to get one pound of nitrogen, you need to have um, four pounds of product. So per thousand square feet, I mean, so we could talk about the putting the tape measure out and measuring and doing all of these things. But really, a lot of these products, they have that already done for you. I mean, Scott's best marketing out there. Um, they make their product that you can just put in the spreader and they tell you the setting and, you know, it's, it's very well done. But basically, you're looking for about a, a, um, one pound per thousand or one and a half pounds per thousand. Um, and that's going to keep your, your lawn pretty happy for the season. It used to be that they recommended a different analysis and a different um, fertilizer for the fall. But in the past, oh gosh, maybe almost 10 years now, that's, that's not been the, the thought process on this. So really, um, just keep it simple. Get yourself a bag of fertilizer and you can use it for both spring and fall. The, the only thing that we do recommend is that you don't wait and apply fertilizer too late into the season. It's not really great to send fertile, like grass that is just pumping into, into winter. So end of August, early, early September. Um, yeah, so that's sort of my, my deal on grass. I could actually talk about this forever. I do really, really love it. Um, and like I said, every year it's fun. It's like a new experiment for me, even though I, I know the seed that I use and I've used it so many times before. Um, and I know what I'm going to see here, even this, I'm going to be so excited to just check it out. I'm going to put water on it and check it out. My husband thinks I really need a much better hobby. Um, but it is great. I love to watch the grass grow and I'm going to be doing, you know, all summer I'm going to be doing this and I really do like my like my clients that are out there working on their lawns. I really do expect to have uh, some real progress here by this time next year, but it, it is important to to set realistic expectations. I know that I'm not going to do this and then in two weeks or even a month have a lush lawn um, that's just not how it's going to be if you're you know in a situation where you have had a lot of loss over last season or over the winter or whatever the reason is um, or maybe you've had some construction work done and you've got things that you need to fill in if you're going to want instant gratification you're going to just have to go and buy the sod um, but if you can it's it's a cheaper alternative right to do the seed it just takes more time so cash is king and everybody has to pick what works best for them because sod is not like I said sod is not the answer to, for everybody because um, you can spend the money and you can have the instant gratification and then a month later it can all dry up and die so both of them require work um, I like to grow in my grass um, just because then I can pick the seeds a little bit better you know for this area of my lawn I'm going to use a seed like this but if I was going to be under the trees I could use a, a, a seed mix that's more designed for shade growth so in that way I can sort of tailor my lawn a little bit specifically um, but also, if I was going to have sod and I was aerating and overseeding and doing all of those things in my spring and my fall months, then I would be overseeding with a sun mix or a shade mix. Um, you can get good seed at so many different places. Uh, I mean, Home Hardware has good seed. There's lots of landscape supply places within the Peterborough area that have great seed as well. You'll do, like you go to a landscape supply place, you'll get um, a bigger bag like this, a 50 pound bag. Um, typically when you're at a Canadian Tire or a Home Hardware, you're gonna get a smaller bag. So it just depends what, what you're looking for. But the big, big takeaways, make sure you have a rye grass because the rye grass is your nurse grass and it's gonna pop first. Remember to think about weeds and bugs as the bullies in the playground. And you can do all of the weed spraying, you can do all of these things, but if you are not building a strong turf 
to stand up to these weeds, then they're just going to knock you down. I mean, we've all seen the weeds growing out of pavement. You know, you pave a new driveway and suddenly a dandelion finds a way to get through. Um, so it doesn't matter how much money you spend on some of these things that will be offered to you from different companies. If you're not doing the cultural stuff, then there's just, there's just no hope. You need to aerate or, or deep batch. You need to overseed. Um, and you need to be a little bit aggressive about it in your good growing months. Like I said, if you can't aerate or you can't overseed, then get a nice hard rake and just rake your lawn and pull out some of that dead stuff from over winter. Um, you don't have a sprinkler system? Just put your sprinkler out. You don't want to spend your money on water? watch the weather forecast and get your seed and stuff down before there's some rain coming. Um, there's lots of ways to do this um, and lots of different different methods just depending on what your priorities are. So do something to get your lawn kind of breathing again whether that's a rake, an aeration or a deep thatch top dress if you can. Um, not only is it good for the soil um, and amending it, but you're going to fill in any little depressions and stuff because inevitably you end up with spots that are getting more worn down or, or walked on more and they end up being a little bit lower or who knows, you had some construction and now you've got some holes or whatever. Um, I always recommend the big push of the mix, the soil and the seed. Um, I love the compost addition and then a good fertilizer. Um, slow release, a high first number, a very low middle number, and sort of around the 10 to the, the teens for the, the K. So NPK, 35, 14, something like that. Um, I like to be aggressive with a lawn. I'll do something like this. I'll do a big push in the spring and the fall and then every two weeks sort of as long as I've got good growing conditions or conditions that I can control I'll just keep putting seed down and filling in my spots. If I was growing in um, a lawn that was like this one that has not been taken care of before I will probably be doing soil and seed kind of all throughout the year as much as I can um, and you basically will get what you put in. So, um, I hope that was informative. I hope I didn't talk around in circles. Sometimes I get lost in my train of thought and I start to just look at my grass seed and get excited about it. Um, I would love to hear from anybody. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. As you can tell, I am always interested in talking about grass, so I'm happy to give tips and tricks. Um, there are so many... Maybe cut there and then we'll start. <laughs> I don't know where you're going to cut it, but I'm just going to say a goodbye now. Um, thanks so much for letting me talk about one of my favorite topics, grass seed and growing grass. It's been great chatting with everybody and I hope everybody has a great summer and a great growing season.